Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. And I have I have a guy who edits it for me, so he can straighten out any messes that we have. But we should okay. be good. Cool beans. All right. All right, here we go. What? Maybe not. What? And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success. I'm your host, Wes Tankersley, back at you with another interview. Today, my guest is Brad Dalton. I've known Brad for, I'm going to say about 10 years because it's it's been a while. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of belong in a little bit of his coaching tree. He was a ba he's, was a baseball coach, still coaches baseball, I believe, author and a speaker. So, Brad... Thanks for joining me. Hold on. I'm going to switch your site. There we go. There we go. That feels better. Boom. There he is. Now that people see me, they might just start fleeing and ducking, but we'll, we'll roll with it anyway. Yeah. Well, Hey man, it's good having you on here. I, I, you know, I've kind of, like I said, I, I met you probably, I think it's been about 10 years ago. I haven't talked mm -hmm. for almost three now. And, and, um, I taught for four and then, you know, I was going to school when I met you the first time you came right. to actually one of my college classes. So, yeah. 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 Long time me, ago. Me and my non-traditional student type <laughs> setting. So, well, it's, hey, what? Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? You know, kind of where you grew up and and why you got into athletics and 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 you have a bunch of books back there. I know one of them's yours. I could see it, but sure. we'll get talking yeah. about books here in a little bit. You bet. Well, right now, uh, you know, I'm Brad Dalton. I'm the best self catalyst speaker. Uh, best-selling author, host of the Best Self Podcast. Uh, have an incredible wife uh, that's way cooler than I am. Two incredible kids that uh, one of them's on the autism spectrum. He's a big, a really big part of my story and kind of where I've ended up where I'm, I'm at today. And uh, as Big Dog alluded to, I was a, uh, I've been a lifelong uh, coach as well. Did a, uh, college ranks, high school ranks and uh, an advocate for all kids in our, in our community, uh, baseball-wise. So um, education and people have been my juice uh, for as long as I can remember. And so did you grow up in Boise, or are you from out of the, out of the area? Yeah, all but two years of my life. My wife and I could have gone and taught in New Zealand and, and a bunch of different things, but she, she wanted to stick around. She, was the, she had the type of family where she had – grandparents, aunts, uncles, great grandparents, everyone lived here. And I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't get her to leave. So, but I love the area. I always wanted to come back and raise a family here. It's, it's an awesome, as you know, an incredible area. So right. uh, yeah, all but two years of my life. And so you're currently, you teach, is it, are you still teaching lifetime at Boise high? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I teach, I teach, I've kind of, I've turned it into a leadership class. So it's, I, I call it a leadership course in the fitness department. So we, we do, you know, a lot of stuff that's in, in my book and a lot of stuff that I speak about and, and coach with personal development. We do that for about 40 to 60%. It's like 60, 40, 40, 60, depending on the day. Yeah. And then we go get some, go get our fitness on. Kind of put a little meaning behind, behind yeah. the fitness. Yeah, man. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't do something that other people couldn't take seriously. So I, I, and nothing in my life, I don't want to blend in. I don't want, I want to be abnormal. I don't want to look like uh, anyone else. I want to be my own kind of beast. And so, yeah, when I got, when I came to Boise high school, I, I, I wasn't going to look like what they had before or what anyone else was given elsewhere. I wanted to be different. So you've coached baseball for quite a while. How many years have you been doing that? 20 plus 20 plus and you started out did you start out at bora or were you no i started out at boise okay. so I, I i played a couple years of jc baseball and my body was pretty crummy i uh, ended up ultimately having l4 l5 s1 reconstructive surgery my knees end up having reconstructive work on it and so i hung it up and so at age 20 i was a head coach at the age of 20 and at boise um, and it just led me on a massive journey. I, 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 
lot of a uh, lot of ups and downs and and lots of success. I mean, I won I've won everywhere I've gone. There's not been a stop where we didn't have really 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 good success. Uh, but you know, in those in those in that journey, obviously, as you know, there's lots of not successful moments, but learning moments. Yeah. And I think that that's the biggest thing is you call it a learning moment. Some people call it a failure. And and I don't, I don't know that people really understand that mm. just because you fail doesn't mean that you can't learn from it and then do it again. Right. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's not winning, win or lose, it's win or learn. Yeah. And those are all opportunities. I don't even look at, I don't even, I'm not even really a goal guy. I'm a, I'm not a, I'm not so much a, I do believe there's a place for goals, no doubt about it, but I'm more growth conscious than I am goal conscious. And I look at the success road more as a bunch of mile markers. So, uh, yeah, I mean, those, every time you lose, even when you win, I mean, you can win ugly. There's, there's ways that we can get better. All of us in any sector, baseball, life, every day, there's, there's tons of opportunities if you're paying attention. I think that one of the big things that I noticed as kind of just kind of following you from the outside in, kind of seeing where you're going with LinkedIn and watching you coach over the years, growth mindset is something that I would associate with you. I was thinking about that probably a couple hours ago. I was like, you know, if I had to put a pin on it, that's what it would be. You're always working towards making things better. Where did yeah. that come from? Oh man. Well, that, that's such a great question. I get that asked quite a bit. Well, I think I've generally always been a positive guy. We have a mutual friend uh, that always told me I was the most positive guy he's ever been around. And I take a lot of pride in that. I, I, I believe that, you know, if you, the words that are coming out of our mouth, the, the actions that we're about to, you know, put forth or whatever, whatever is about to happen, if it's not going to be something that has us trending in, the, in our desired identity, if it's not going to have us trending in a, in a way that's going to have us going to where we ultimately want to go, we can't do it. And so I've always kind of been that guy. But when I, when I had a, when my youngest was diagnosed with autism, I always, I call that the 15, uh, 15 minute, just sucker punch to the gut because I, I was a jock, massive athletic guy. My wife was a Gatorade player of the year in high school and basketball D1 basketball player. We're both really social and we're both also career educators when, when he was diagnosed. So we knew it was coming. We knew there was going to be bullying. We knew there was going to be cyber bullying. We knew that he was probably going to get picked on. He was going to look, be looked at differently in the grocery market, on an airplane, anywhere. He was going to be, it was going to be an uphill battle like friends Man, I'll just be honest with you. He doesn't have a friend to this day. He's never had a sleepover and he's 15 years old. So we knew all that was coming. And so it was really tough to digest. And I talked about the 15 minute time frame because, man, I, I got in my car. My wife and I took separate cars there. We met at the place he got diagnosed. And man, there was tears on the way home. There was a sick feeling in my stomach on the way home. And uh, man, but by the time it was a 15 minute ride, by the time I got home, I just, I decided that this isn't fair to him. It's not fair to me. Uh, I'm not going to do him this way. I'm not going to do myself this way. And so I've got 15 years before he graduates. What am I going to do in these next 15 years to give him the best life he could possibly have? How can I make this an opportunity for all of us? And so, man, when you have a kid, uh, you know, we had an older one. We thought we had the playbook down, man. Right. And then you have, a, and that's, that's also false, but. Uh, 100%. I'm yeah. I'm out right now. I got a two, I got a two month old sitting downstairs. So. Oh yeah. They just, they're like a different kind of beast. Yeah. Uh, every, every age, like every time they get another notch in the age ladder, it's just like a, but man, with a kid on the spectrum, what worked two day, two days ago, ain't going to may not work two weeks from now. Like everything is constantly evolving. So man, you can't get caught up in numbers or dates or set goals. I mean, everyone has goals. You still got to have goals. I mean, we had that, I had that goal that I wanted to have him be as ready as possible by the time he graduated from high school and all that stuff. But 
You have to be growth minded. You have to be because there's all kinds of pitfalls and pity city moments and potential for victimitis moments. There's so much that happens that if you get caught up uh, on the negative train or if you're not growth minded, your lens are going to be put in the wrong place. And you're not only setting him up for failure, but I'd be setting myself up for, for failure. And so it just like everything that I was to that moment, it just got a highlighter got put over it. And I've just intensified. And as you know, I mean, you're in the, you're you're impacting people with your podcast and, and, and it is what you do. I mean, man, the more you do it, man, the more it becomes your juice. I mean, personal development is a sexy thing to coach and be a part of because you're having a massive impact on people's lives. Yep. It's it's awesome. Yeah, and that was the interesting thing for me because, you know, I mean, I have I got my master's degree. I taught for four years. I got my master's degree. I coached for the four or five years that I did, but I could not, I couldn't fathom what was going on in education. But I, when I got out, I had to find something that, that kept that flowing. And this, right. is, this has been it. This is that thing. It's like, I can show people through having a conversation with you, through having a right. conversation with different people from different, you know, walks of life that right. success is possible. And mm -hmm. it you just different people have different ways of getting there. Right. No doubt about it. So you coached, what'd you say? 22 years you coached, you're doing a little bit of, um, what are you doing? Club ball now? Is that how our travel yep. ball? Is that what they call it? Yeah. Private stuff, club ball. Yeah. All that stuff. So I heard that you're pretty meticulous from someone, our mutual friend. He said that you mm -hmm. had charts on charts. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I think our mutual friend probably called them nerd charts. But <laughs> uh, yeah, man, I mean, uh, you know, the old verbiage, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. If I'm going to go into anything, whether it be with you or a game or anything, I want to be I want to be great. Yep. Good enough's not good enough. I want to, I want to, if there's a layer that I need to peel going into something, I'm going to peel it. And it's not just about me. It's about the people around me. Like with our players, man, I want to win. I spell fun W I N. So, I, <laughs> you know, so I, I'm going to do, I'm, I want to know every tendency. I want to know what kind of gum you're chewing. I want to know everything so that I can put a plan together. Yeah, absolutely. I, I and I think you, you think you have to be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm passionate about that. That's my, that might be, you know, the scheme of everything might be my favorite part yeah. of coaching. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, the preparation, the thought process. I mean, and obviously I didn't do it very long, but I, my last year that I coached baseball as a freshman coach at Middleton high school. And it was the first year they had a freshman team. And it was just like, your mind is always going. You're thinking about, oh, yeah. you're looking at numbers, you're looking at stats. Who's going to line up with this way? Who's going to line up that way? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's just a, yeah, it's a fun thing. But I heard someone once told me this and I just about wanted to punch him in the face that there was no, um, baseball wasn't a strategic sport. And I was just like, are you freaking kidding me? Yeah. Get out of, get out of my house. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Only oh. someone that knows nothing about baseball would even call it a stand around sport. Yeah. Now, it if is. you're doing things, if you, you know, if you're doing it right, it's not a stand around sport. Yeah. There are some unfortunate, some crummy, crummy leaders out there that make it a stand around sport, but yep. not with so, guys like you and I. Yeah. So, so coaching is something that you still do a little bit of, but you, you, you started this podcast, which, you know, obviously when I, when you do a, when I do a podcast, I start to kind of be aware of all these podcasters around me. Sure. So what came first, the podcast or the book? Podcast, podcast led to the book. Okay. And so yeah. what, tell us what your podcast is and what it's about. You bet. Well, it's called the best self podcast and it really just began like a lot of my stuff, I used to say it was out of luck. I don't think I don't say that anymore because all the good things that have happened for me have been because I was trying to add value to others. So I, I don't think it was luck. I, uh, but the podcast started at the beginning of COVID for me. And I was just people are my juice relationships are the true power grid in life. And I was trying to think of ways to be abnormally awesome as an educator. And 
I, I never once watched a podcast in my entire life. And I decided I'm going to start a podcast. I just, I was trying to find a way to stay connected and still teach the leadership portions of my stuff uh, with students at the time. And so I just, I started it and, and, you know, five months later, I'm in 50 plus countries and I never marketed it, never monetized nothing. It just happened. And it's just positive stuff. You know, the, the podcast itself originally, I was just going to have people from different, different lanes all over the joint from gardeners to athletes, to motivational speakers, to authors. That was the original plan, but it's, it's kind of ended up going towards best-selling authors, motivational speakers, people that are really high level uh, execs. That's kind of the direction it's gone. And it's just been awesome. I mean, so, some of the people that we've had on, I've pinched myself thinking, I cannot believe this cat wants to talk to me. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's been really cool. And it's just, it revolves around the concept of being your best self. What goes into being the best version of you? How can you out improve the previous best version of you and how can we add value to the people that we care about the most and how do we invest in ourselves that's kind of the general idea and i i enjoy you know you said something in the beginning that just kind of hits with me because i i actually did an episode of it there's a guy named chad wright who is a former marine that i listened to yeah and he was talking about he's one of these endurance runners that runs like a hundred mile marathon through the hills or whatever you know it's right. it's crazy he does he does some crazy stuff and he was talking about those goals and how oh, you set the little one. And if you're dying, you know, you go on a run and you hit mile one and you're dying, you got to look ahead of you and think, Hey, let's get the next hundred feet. Hey, let's get the next 200 feet. And then yep. just put everything together. And, and it ends up, ends up being better. How right. you reach that end goal. Right. And that's, that's mm -hmm. what it's all about. Mm -hmm. How do you see education? Because you've been you've been an educator that long as well. How have you seen it changed over the year as far as goals goals being set and in reaching those goals? Because I feel like it's a little bit different. You and I probably I don't know how old you are. I'm 41, but when I when I when I was in high school, the reason I wanted to be a teacher was because there was people like you, people like my head football coach, people like my baseball coach. They would say, you know, they they pushed me along and they saw value in me and they added value to my life. And I wanted to do the mm -hmm. same thing. But I find it harder. I found it harder to do that this day and age when everyone has a phone out. Everyone has, um, you know, their attention is not on you. It, they don't you reach those right. two or three people instead of reaching, you know, say 30, right? Right. Well, uh, man, there's a lot of different layers to that. One, uh, man, it's more challenging than ever, than ever for sure, uh, because the, the phone thing, clearly a challenge. Uh, but I think in everything, no different than coaching on the diamond, uh, what you tolerate is what you're accepting. So you, you've got to have expectations. You lay down the law. You, you love them. You know, when, when pe people really don't give to you know what's about what you say until they know that you care about them. Right. So when, whether it be in a, a personal development with my coaching clients that way, whether it be on the diamond, whether it be in the classroom, the moment they step into my facility, it's about building culture. The, the, from the time they get in to the time they leave, it's about building culture it's about loving them. It's about, and it's about adding value. And when they see how much I care about them, I'm not saying that's a hundred percent. There's people that don't like me as well. Right. Uh, you know, but I, I, I make sure that's a priority. And you, again, you're not going to connect with the 100%, but I'll say this, I'm not going to worry as much about those 5% in my, in my world, 95% of the people are going to be dialed in. They're going to be leaning forward. They're going to be nodding their head. They're going to be ready to rock. They're going to just be drinking the Kool-Aid. Uh, and then there's going to be 5% that don't. But I'm not going to focus on the five. I'm going to try to help bridge that gap between talent, performance, potential, all that jazz. I'm, going to, I'm not going to give up on them. But I'm not going to get hung up on them. I'm going to – the people that are bought in, we're going to crush it. And I'm a true believer that we assimilate to whom we associate. So if I can get 95% of the people on board, 
uh, maybe those 5% will naturally gravitate a little bit closer to the cool kid side. I really believe it's about setting expectations. So we, and the hard part too, and you know this, the hard part is, you know, another thing I've learned with my kiddo on the spectrum is that you've got to meet them where they're at. We got in any arena, whether it's an adult, high level billionaire dude coming into a personal development session or a 16 year old kid. They, we all have issues. Right. And we're all coming in with different stuff. We have, all of us have too many socks in the top drawer. All of us have too much junk in the trunk. All of us need to streamline stuff and we've got to meet them where they're at. And unfortunately, unfortunately for them, some of them have a lot of baggage. I, I've had the stuff that, I mean, I, I, I had a, a student handful of years ago. She just didn't look right. Something was wrong. She's a nice girl. I really just thought the world of her and something wasn't right. So I kind of put the rest of the class on, on a paw or ha- put, gave them kind of a, almost like busy work stuff. And I pull her into the hall and I said, Hey, uh, are you okay? And she just, boom, just starts sobbing on my chest. Her mom had been hit by a texting and uh, texting driver. Mom was running on the sidewalk. Wasn't in, even in a bike lane. Damn. Mom was on a sidewalk and gets freaking run over by someone texting and driving. So, you know, we just don't, unless, you know, unless, unless we're in that locker room, unless we're behind those doors, unless we're in those meetings, we just don't know. So that's why I've, I tend to, uh, I just try to meet them where they're at. I meet them with grace. I meet them with a hungry heart to grow. And I try to love them. And uh, I don't think that, I think that's a universal thing. Like I said, well, I've had millionaires and billionaires uh, in my room. And I've had, you know, I've taught elementary. It's all the same. Right. Man, the ankle biters, we got to meet them where they're at. So, yeah. You know, it's funny because I, when I got my, when I graduated, I'm like, there's, there is, um, I'll teach elementary, I'll teach high school. I'm not teaching middle school. And <laughs> that's been the job, one I haven't taught. <laughs> guess what job no. I got? Oh, really? <laughs> so I taught middle school out of Marsing and Marsing for two years. Okay. And man, I'll tell you what, the first year was tough. The second year, it was like a, you know, you, you put in that hard work and, and then it pays off in the end. Yeah. And you earn that trust, you earn that respect, and there's nothing better than just, just having that. So, oh, yeah. yeah, that's the good stuff, man. That every once in a while, this is a tough profession teaching, educators, you know, healthcare workers, a lot of these people that are so important in our world, man, they're fried right now. Right. They don't feel appreciated. They don't feel appreciated. They don't feel like they're valued in general. There are people fleeing both of them like, like a wildfire. Yeah. And it's going to be incredible. The, and ter- the turnover is going to be not very good this year. There's definitely going to be a lot of opportunities for young teachers because a lot of people are getting out. They just don't feel appreciated. Uh, but I tell you what, every once in a while you get, you get a note and it reminds you why you do it. Yeah. And I, I tell people frequently, I mean, I, I'm still in it, but I'm, I'll make, if it was just about money, I mean, I'll make, I'll, I'll make a lot more money doing my speaking and my coaching stuff than I will teaching this year. I've stuck it out with teaching because I just love kids that much. Yeah. And that's, that's really, you know, that's the, that's the funny thing is like, you hear that you, you, you have to, you honestly have to love what you do because if you don't, it's not worth it. And that's, no. you know, that's commendable. And it, I, I think that how, how, how did COVID affect you? Because, you know, it's been, we're in the second year here, right? The first year yeah. was probably pretty tough. Was, was yeah. Boise high set up for online learning or did you have to, no I, I thought I remember there was some people who just had to figure it out. All of us. Yeah. <laughs> 90, I bet 95, 99, 99.9 just had to figure it out. And it was rough at first. Almost none of us were trained to teach online school. Certain certain subjects like mine, 
I mean, it, <laughs> lifetime sports. Uh, it was it was really rough. I really had to reinvent myself, reinvent how I do things. It became strictly a leadership class. Yeah, which is right up my alley. But I don't know if that's what the kids signed up for. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, man, you just it. But you know, moving ahead. I would never, ever, ever want to do COVID again. I wouldn't, if I could do it over again and it not be around apps, you know, obviously for sure on that one, but it didn't, for those that really stuck it out in terms of the tech part, it, it should make you a better teacher. It yeah. should make you more efficient. It should, I mean, it, there's, there's been a lot of positives as well. It's just, there's been a hangover. There's right. a COVID hangover. There's a lot of kids that no longer know how to be accountable. There's a lot of people that got accustomed to doing stuff with their, with a t-shirt and underwear on or pajamas <laughs> on, you know, right. you can't see, you know, there's people, no tardiness and absences and, and we felt, you know, a lot of us felt so bad for kids going through that, those early stages that people, kids were just getting pushed along. Right. They weren't even being held accountable for their grades. And so there's a massive hangover there because there's a lot of kids that it's almost like they forgot how to be educated or like common decency stuff, just walking through the halls and not yelling. Uh, just there's a lot of small things. Like there's kids that are juniors in high school that really until this year really didn't know what it's like to be in high school in this area. Yeah. Where it's that's... 11, 12. So yeah, it it's definitely been tough. It's definitely been tough. I, I don't know how there's a lot of people that aren't going to get over it. Yeah. Some kids are going to graduate and never have felt great about their experience. A lot of them are going to feel awesome. Uh, you know, I, I say the choice uh, success is by choice, uh, not by chance. So everyone has the opportunity to flip this bad boy and make it a great experience. Whether some decide to stay in pity city or not, that's, you know, that's really on them. Yep. And I think the social interaction thing is probably the most detrimental mm -hmm. because I mean, we're already in a society where you can text or you can chat or yeah. you can do whatever. You don't have to actually talk right. to someone's face and have a conversation. Right. So, yeah. So you, so you wrote a book, DNA mm -hmm. of a winner. Yeah. What, what challenged you to write that book and tell me a little bit about the process of that? Because I think that there's a lot of people who are writing books now, but they, I, there's always this block about how hard it is to do that. Right. Well, I would say to the people that are on the, on the, you know, on the fence, you know, thinking, am I worthy? Am I good enough? All those things, you know, the ideal client for you is you, you know, you, you have a story. People want to hear it. People want to hear your story. There's someone out there that wants to hear your story. People want to hear from you. And so do it. The first step is the first step, right? Do it do it, bet on you, invest in you. And the only person you have to compare yourself is your best self. Who cares what other people think? Right. Who cares? Uh, you're not, you weren't meant to live in someone else's movie anyway. All right. So do it. I would encourage you and implore you to do it. Uh, for me, <laughs> I was that guy. I mean, I, frankly, I, I wasn't looking to write a book. I, I got noticed by uh, a former publisher of Tony Robbins on my podcast. So they'd seen my podcast. They managed to track me down through that. And, and we end up having a conversation and they say, D would you like to write a book with me? And I'm like, how do I turn that down? <laughs> so I was like, I guess I'm writing a book. And I knew nothing going in and kind of like everything in life. I mean, unless you've been in those meetings and all that jazz, man, there's a lot to learn. You think you know baseball. If you've never played baseball, you don't know baseball. Right. I could act like I know curling. Well, I don't know jack about curling. I'm sure I'd learn more. And I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd learn so much in 60 minutes of talking to a curler. Uh, I don't know if that's what a, they're called, but we'll yeah. go with <laughs> If that's the term. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, so we got into that and I, and you like anything else, man, you just got to ask lots of questions. Just let, 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 uh, let curiosity be a catalyst for you. And, you know, the greatest in the world are run by great questions. They're not run by great answers they're run by great questions. So, uh, I would, I would tell peeps out there, if you're on the verge of doing something like this, 
just ask tons of questions. Be, you know, Simon Sinek talks about being the idiot. Be the idiot. Ask the questions that no one else is asking. Who care? Who cares what they think? If they're the type of person that's going to thumb their, you know, stick their nose up at you and all that jazz, they're not people you want in your circle anyway. So kick them to the curb. So yeah, man, the whole process it, it's it is nuts. It is nuts. It was, I mean, I actually pounded out the book fast. Most people take take a little bit longer. I had mine done in 30 days. I I just locked myself in a room and for 30 days just hammered and hammered and hammered and hammered. And I was really organized about it. Uh, I I'm a guy that has a folder for a folder for yeah. a folder. So I would I would come up with a bunch of ideas and then I'd have subfolders for those ideas. And but you learn how to format it. I had a I had a publisher. I would strongly encourage people to have a publisher. I know you can self-publish, but man, I I could not me personally, I couldn't have done it without a publisher. This the the insights and their ideas and the ability to bounce it off someone who knows what they do. Like this is what they do for a living. I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert on you know my shoulder more so than a dude that's a shoulder surgeon. Like I, if I want to, if I want to fix my shoulder, I'm going to go to a shoulder guy and it's the same thing. So I, my publisher was amazing. They had, you know, they have formatted and they have week, we had weekly meetings and, and we just went through stuff every week and we would, I would just ask tons of questions. I would show up. I was the same way when I was coaching high school baseball, I'd go to a clinic. I, I knew what I was talking about. I, I coached for 20 years. And I, and in my lifetime, I was in 14 state championship games and I guarantee you, we went to a clinic. There was nobody that asked more questions than I did. It's not that I would thought that I was a bonehead or didn't have a clue. It's that I was hungry to learn. I want to get better. So I, I would ask questions in our meetings with the publisher and, and it turned out pretty good. The crazy craziest part was it took us almost as long for the cover and the flaps <laughs> and stuff like that yeah that you you thought would have been a, that took forever that took about as long as me writing the book it itself was very educational just how you go about picking a cover and and what what to do what not to do it's and, the first thing that people see when yeah. it's at a bookstore and when you go to go when you go you want to have a reason to pick that book up right right and so right. that's what's, the most yeah. important part, probably. What's in it is good, but you got to right. get them in it first. Right. You got to get them to stop scrolling, yep. scrolling or to stop moving or. Yeah. But you hear all kinds of different opinions. I mean, I had a, a lady that used to work in a book work warehouse that told me, don't pick anything dark because there's so many dark books. It'll just blend in. Uh -huh. uh, and mine ended up being a little bit dark on the binding but it's man we went through so many different models and ideas and this this is the one we ended up with and it worked out it was a best seller so what what can you tell us about it without telling us about it yeah man well it's you know i can i can tell you about it as as well it's kind of like this man i could give you my playbook if you don't know what to do with it or you don't know how to teach it the fact that you have it in your hands doesn't mean anything right so i uh, the, the book itself is designed to help you create the, not only the best version of you, but the best version of others. And it has all the elements and all the pieces and, and the nuggets and the growth opportunities that come in that journey. You know, it talks about the success road, you know, success, success isn't a destination. Success is the road. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talk about change. I mean, for, for things to change, I've got to change. If I don't change, nothing changes. If if I do change, everything changes. You know, I, Brad Dalton, I am the key. And so we we talk about a lot of that stuff. And it's 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 a it's an easy read. I've had 13 year olds read it. I've had 65 year old retirees love it. It's it's cross curricular, man. And what portion or what lane can't you become a better version of yourself? Right. You know, so I've had a million people like when we were writing the book, they were trying to find a way to niche it up. And really, 
almost every expert will tell you you need, you need to niche stuff up. You make more money when you niche it up and and all that jazz. But man, I like I said, I we didn't end up totally niching it up because this is this is relevant to the culture of any place, of any family, of any team, of any corporation. Culture's king. Yep. So and it doesn't have to be the, the funny thing about it is like I relate a lot of my life to sports, but the fact of the matter is is that there is you have to you have to be a winner in everything that you do. You have to be willing to no matter what it is. There isn't one thing that I did in baseball and football in basketball, any sports that I played that I could not relate to life. And that's what I think is the the yeah. really awesome part for me is that I right. can relate those things sure. and, and use them again. Well, and here's the thing too. Uh, we all have winter in us. We all have greatness inside of us. All of us. I believe that it's our birthright to be great, to be excellent. I believe it's in all of us. It's just a matter of Sometimes we got to dig it out. We don't have to search for purpose. It's already in us. It's not a hunt. It's in us. Sometimes we got to be surrounded by the right people, but all the time we've got to be intentional. Like I said, success isn't chance. Success is designed. Like it's, it's intentional. You have to go out and get it. Yeah. So, and that's what, that's, that's why I do this. Like, that's mm -hmm. why I feel like, People don't understand. I think that they see, they don't see the struggles. They see the end result. And I think they need to understand that there is a struggle in between there. You yeah. know, um, I just interviewed a guy from Three Doors Down. He's a guitarist for Three Doors Down. And oh, nice. he, he talked about all the things that he had going on. He had a couple felonies before he was um, 13. You know, he had some burglaries. He had these things going on. And he had a choice. It was change or continue going down the path there is. And he chose the other option, right? But we only see him standing on stage playing guitar with three doors down. We don't see him right. that part. And that's, that's right. what I like about it. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Those are my favorite kinds of stories. I have I have family that's, that's had trouble with the law, you know, from gangs to meth uh, to alcoholism to abuse i've seen or in some shape or form been a part of a lot of different stuff and yeah you don't see all the stuff you don't yeah. see all the stuff but man how cool and rewarding is it to have a conversation with a guy that's had some real struggle and he's he's doing incredible right now that's yeah. cool yeah and i think it's and I, I just i think that's great i love what you're doing i think it's uh it's going to be very fulfilling it's great to talk to you a little bit about because i i mean yeah i've known you for 10 years but we've never talked like this before so right. it's, it's more of just like you know hanging out at a baseball clinic or you know right here and there Amen. so it's it's super cool to see what you're doing if people want to get the book if they want to mm -hmm. listen to you on the podcast i'm sure you're on all platforms tell us what the mm -hmm. name is again tell us where we can find the book yeah it's the best self podcast and it's it's the B E S T is all caps and it's an acronym. So, uh, I had to, I had to change my original podcast name cause someone else, there was a conflict there. So, yeah. uh, so it's best self podcast and the book can be found on Amazon. If you just type in Brad Dalton, DNA of a winner, it'll pop right up. And yeah, if you want any of my other coaching platforms, we've got an incredible cohort starting on March 8th. It's called the Awakening Cohort. It's a group coaching call, and it is a game changer. I love it. And we got other stuff in the in the works too. We'll have I'll be speaking coast to coast if uh, we're lining that up right now over the next twelve months into twenty three. If if you have a listener on here that thinks this could be something good for their people, uh, you can get a hold of me. I'm sure uh, you'll be able to get a hold of Big Dog here or myself. You can get a hold of me at brad at braddaltongroup.com. All that works. Yeah, and I'll make sure that I put some of this stuff in the show notes too so that people can find it in the episode on the podcast as well. Um, and then are you going to do uh, – have you have you done the audio version of your book yet? Or uh... I need to. Gosh, I get requested that like, like daily. I'm, I'm a booger eater, man, crack smoker, <laughs> one of the two. I need to do it. I, I haven't. 
I need yeah. to get an audible version out there for sure. So a guy like me drives around all day. So now I'm a, yeah. I sell window covering. So I drive around all day and I listen to things <laughs> all day long. Right. And I'm listening I'm to Will way. Smith's book right now and it's, nice. it's really good. Um, nice. But it's kind of yeah. the same thing. It's like you get, you just start narrowing your path towards what you're looking for. And he just yeah. talks about how he was successful and what he did. And it wasn't, again, another guy where there wasn't always easy. I mean, he had this huge recording contract and he basically spent all his money and lost everything and then had to start over again. So, wow. That's a great, that's an incredible story. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I know. I know. I'm the same way. I don't know how many times I've actually listened to the radio in the last 12 months. I'm always listening to other people's podcasts, always trying to find a way to learn or help others learn. Yeah. Yeah. That's the I juice, baby. Where, where are you? You're on pretty much every social media as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm really active on LinkedIn and Instagram. I've got Facebook stuff as well. Uh, someone told me I should start doing TikTok, so I'm getting my. I, that's uh, that's where I saw you. When yeah. that's that's kind of what sparked it. I was like, man, now he's on TikTok. All right, we got to talk. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this guy's officially kind of. All right, yeah, I I like TikTok. It's it's just a lot, man. There's a million. I just got on another one called Be Connected. It's uh -huh. going to be a combination of LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. TikTok, it's pretty awesome. I ought to hook you up. Yeah, it's it's a it's a cool one too. So yeah, you got to dump those nuggets on TikTok in like sixty seconds. You just throw something out there and make sure that people know that you're you know that's what it is. It's it's a great thing. That's so. what I'm told. I need to get into that. Yeah. All right. Well, we got one last question. The show is called Shaping Success, and and the reason why I called it that is because at one point in my life, there was a kid who told me that he was going to be twice as successful as me when he grew up. And I remember mm. it. It was, it was, you know, I still see the conversation. And I thought to myself, how in the hell can he tell me what success is? Because it's mm. different for you. It's different mm -hmm. for me. It's different for every individual. How do you define success? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this. One, no one has an edge on you in life without your permission. So kudos to you, man. Uh, I would, I would, define success uh, the same way I would define empowerment. It's granting yourself permission and authority to do, to think, to feel, to see things, and to say things uh, in any shape, way, shape, or form that you deem gives you the best possible chance at being your best self. So, you know, for anything to happen in life, you got to grant yourself permission and authority to do so. And success is, like I said, success isn't a destination. Success is the road, is really how, the simplest version I can give you. It's the road. Success uh, is measured by a lot of different ways, by a lot of different people. But at the end of the day, success is about growth and trending in the direction of your desired identity. So uh, I know that's a long-winded answer, but at the end of the day, success is is what about to come out of my mouth, the action I'm about to take, the thoughts that are coming out of my head, is it productive or non-productive? It's not even right or wrong, good or bad. It's, is it trending me up in the direction that I seek my identity to go? Oh, so. I love it. I, if, if you're listening to, if you've listened to this all the way through, you need to rewind and listen to that again, because that is just gold right there. It's Thanks, it's, buddy. I love it. Brad, thanks, thanks a lot for taking the time. I know we had a little gym noise before, and I'm glad we still were able to make this happen. So yeah, um, really appreciate it. I, I look forward to getting the book because now I need to read it. I didn't read it before. A, a lot of the times with, pod, with people that I interview, I don't want to take away from the conversation. I could sit here and question you on your book the whole dang time, but I want to know, I want to know what it's about before I involve myself in that. So sure. I, yeah. Every time I listen to another podcast, I'm like, oh man, I'm going to ask him the same question. So I don't want to listen to someone else interview right. someone because I want right. to ask the questions I want to ask. I so. feel you. I'm the same way. Yep. Thanks for having me on, big dog. Yep. I appreciate it. So, all right, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in. That is the end of the show. Until next time, I challenge you to find the shape of your success. Okay.